Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Are we ready to call forth your daily bread? I'm ready. Are you? So let's go say, Father, I demand and receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Angels are bringing it to me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And that's it. It's coming. Receive it and be happy. Jesus said, ask that you will receive. Meaning, your, the reason for your asking is so that you will receive. Don't ask for asking sake. Ask so that you will receive and that your joy may be full. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we'll give you praise today. Thank you for your anointing that is available in our lives and even through this broadcast right now. I declare every burden is being lifted and every yoke is being destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Healings are taking place even now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now listen, as we go on in this broadcast, if you are sick in your body, Listen, just keep exercising yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. Because as I share God's truth with you, there's a healing anointing that is at work where you are. Praise God. So Matthew chapter 7, we are still talking on things concerning the kingdom of heaven, concerning, concerning our salvation, excuse me. So Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven except those who do the will of God who is in heaven. And I told you the will of God is that you bear fruit. Jesus said in John chapter 15, he says, you did not choose me, I chose you. And the reason I chose you is so that you will do the will of the Father, which is to bear fruit. People don't understand this. The reason we save souls is because that can now become, you know, we think that, to do the will of God means to go and win souls, evangelize the world, oh, hold programs, hold crusades, do mighty things for God. As wonderful as that is, it can become also a big distraction for you. Now, I'm, I'm sharing this truth with us because it is so important in this day and time. I'll say that again. As much as it's wonderful to do big things for the Lord, to build big structures for the Lord, to influence lots and lots of people for the Lord, to, to you, know, you know what I'm talking about. As long as it's wonderful, it's, it's wonderful. See, you should, we should all desire for that. Now, I said, be careful that that does not become a distraction to you from doing the very first thing, which is what? bearing fruit fruit where in you you see because even as a minister of the gospel of jesus christ you can get to that point where and this has happened to lots of ministers now you are loving people you are you are doing all things to make people happy you are doing everything to make people well you want sick people healed so you spend time praying for the anointing of god's spirit to rest on you that you can be effective as a minister you you study you hold programs you do all these things and then these same people now turn against you praise god now it's so easy to get frustrated at that point it's so easy some people even fall sick yes you just hear a minister just came down with some terrible illness and then you're wondering how why how did this happen i thought this man knew god oh this man used to do miracles i'll tell you the truth you don't know what was going on in that person's mind you don't know what transaction was taking place. You, you may never know. Even those closest to him may never know. But you see, God is faithful. Yeah. You know, when you come to Christ, what I'm sharing with you is very important right now. When you come to Christ, you need to sit down and learn of him. The fact that you are anointed doesn't mean you will live long. 
because you are anointed. There are principles for long life. Ah, barabaya kasha. <laughs> Let me show you something. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9. Verse 11. He says, For by me thy days shall be multiplied. Watch this now. <laughs> For by me your days will be multiplied and the years of your life shall be increased. Oh. Hold on. Wisdom is speaking here. Now, when he says wisdom, it's actually the Holy Spirit that's talking. So the whole, because the Holy Spirit is God's wisdom. Praise God. Now, he says, for by me, your days shall be multiplied. Okay. I thought it's a general thing. No, it's not. There is a multiplier. There is the one who increases your years. Did you see that? Now, when you see things like that, you're like, okay, hold on. Slow down. Slow down. Do you want to live long? Do I want to live long? Yes, I want to live long. Okay, I'm not going to live long because I'm doing the work of God. I'm not going to live long because I believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. But you see, I've got to take careful notes on what Jesus taught concerning length of days and long life. And then I have to carefully begin to bear fruit in those areas. Are you following what I'm saying? I must be careful to see that the fruit of God in me is manifesting in those areas. For example, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother, and then your days will be long on the earth. So, okay, so I want my days to be long. I've got to honor them. But then you don't honor them by what you think honor is. When you see that, you go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, how do I appropriate this scripture to myself? Because I want to live long. How do I honor my father and my mother? Okay, maybe, maybe your father and your mother is already, I mean, they are no more. They've, 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 they've left the earth. So how? And then maybe they, they died when you were two years, five, ten years before, before you even got born again. Okay, now I want to live long. I don't have father and mother to honor. What do I do? Am I cut off from length, having length of days? Am I? Nah, nah. He said, by me, by me, your days shall be multiplied. So it is not, see, mm. it is not you taking the initiative by yourself to honor your father and your mother. Now you've seen it. Now you know what is right to do. But you see, without the Holy Spirit, there will be no life in that honor. So, in Abayakasha, you go now, you've seen what you're supposed to do. Remember, I told you this yesterday or two days ago. Without Him, you cannot do anything. Now, let me make that scripture clearer. Without Him, there is nothing you do that will be accepted. That's what it means by without me, you can do nothing. Doesn't mean you, 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 you may not try to do some things, but it will never be accepted. God will not accept anything you do by your own strength. You better settle that in your heart now. So I was talking about something. You know? Now you are a minister. You, are, you, you desire to do big things for God. And then you now begin to let go of the most important parts of why you were called in the first place. You now begin to get angry. You now begin to get bitter. You now begin to get um, impatient with people. And I was like, I mean, of all the work I've done for you, all the things I've labored, I labor over your life night and day. You know, sometimes when you hear people talking, like, you know, sometimes you're like, okay. Yeah, but really, who sent you? Praise God. Yeah, who, who sent you? 
But God sent me. Okay, then stop obeying. Don't stop, stop keeping your obedience based on what people do to you. Keep your obedience to Him. If He commanded you to love, I was talking to you about love yesterday. If He commanded you to love, then love. It doesn't. See, you must detach your life from people and just do. This is the reason Jesus said that when we have done the will of God, this should be our response, this should be our prayer. He said, Father, I am your unprofitable servant. I have done what you commanded me to do. What did he mean unprofitable? You know, I've heard believers say, ah, that, that statement is, is somehow, I don't like, how can I say I'm an um? No, you don't understand what Jesus was saying. I have not been commanded to profit from the work he sent me to do. Mm. So I have done the work. Now I come to him and actually what Jesus was saying is, I will go before him and say, Lord, I have done what you commanded me to do and I didn't take any profit from that. Now I'm not going to take any profit from that. Why? Because I depend on you for reward and my profit is with you. Listen, you may hold a program it doesn't necessarily mean the finances that you spend for that program will come from the offerings in that program. If you are thinking that the offering is going to come from that program, you are wasting your time. It's more like saying you're looking for the profits in what God commanded you to do, if he did command you to do. So sometimes we tell ourselves we are failures. How can we, how can we spend five million naira to host that program and at the end of the day the offering that came in was just two hundred and fifty thousand naira what a loss it wasn't a loss oh we spent 10 million naira for that program can you imagine we, we rented a whole stadium and at the end of the stadium capacity of you know maybe five thousand people or ten thousand people and only 200 people came what a loss it's not a loss. The question is, did the Lord command you to hold that program? Yes, he did. Did you do what you were supposed to do according to the commands he gave to you? Yes, he did. Did he provide the money for it? See, that's why you don't go looking for money to do what... See, people feel that way. Because I remember one time, see, the Lord told me to do something. And I got in, into it and spent a lot of money and did what the Lord told me to do. Actually, it was a trip I went from. And, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, the trip was going to be very profitable in, in, for the reason, you know, we're going for. And then, but at the end of the day, I actually asked myself, why did I have to come all the way to this place to experience what I just experienced? And I was so upset. Like, Lord, you should have told me this same thing you're telling me now without me coming all this way. So I spent all this money and then immediately the Lord said to me, said, was it your money? I said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> God, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Yeah, because when God said go on the cliff, he provided the money for it, praise God. So <laughs> it wasn't my money. So why am I angry over what... <laughs> All I did was, all I gave was my time, you know, and then, you know, my space. Praise God. But then God said, is it your money? I said, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I, I'm sorry. Now, I learned a lot. This was many years ago. I learned a lot from that day. Number one, when God tells you to do something, don't, don't struggle to get the money. Wait for him. He will provide the money for you. And when he provides the money, don't start counting gain or profit from what God commanded you to do. Go back to him and say, Lord, I am done. I have finished. Because you see, if you're a true minister of the gospel, you will realize this truth. That you don't get your kicks from that thing that you do. <laughs> hey, you, you're done. You go back home and say, Lord, I'm done. Thank you, sir. Like you preacher, you're invited to preach somewhere and you're expecting some mega honorarium. And then you say, oh, thank you very much, sir. And then he give you juice to drink and then you drink the juice and you're still waiting. And then he says, sir, uh, when are you leaving? Uh, leaving, okay. And then you get angry. So can you imagine? I'm never going to preach in that place again. Then God did not send you in the first place. 
You see, this is what now tomorrow I'm going to start going into how the fruit of the Spirit comes into all these things that I'm talking about because our time is up. Praise God. Now listen, allow the Holy Spirit to flow freely in you. All he's asking you to do is submit to him and he will do a marvelous work in your life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.